Yeah, no, I've been working out since June. But mm. just like really just being intentional, taking care of myself rather than taking care of everybody else. Can we ever do that as men? Um, I think we can, bro. We just gonna lose a great deal of mother because their entitlement is gonna cause them to crash out once they realize they ain't getting what they used to get. But I got seven kids, so my excuse is easy. I could just be like, I got kids, yeah, grown people, mm-hmm. and you know, gotta kind of respect that or not. I don't care either way, but yeah, I think we can, bro. Yeah, yeah. We ready? Well, did we get all that? Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. That was some good shit. What's popping, y'all? Y'all know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill. J Hill Podcast. Uh, another special guest. Listen, man, we're going to keep them coming. This shit is just going crazy. Fourth quarter. Man, look at God. That's all I can say. Speaking of guys, I got Derek Grace in the building. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you having me. My guy, I appreciate yeah. you for pulling up, man. No, I work no problem, hard for bro. this. No but people like yourself, you know what I'm saying, to be acknowledged, all for that sure. shit. I work yeah. hard for this, man. Yeah. Derek Grace is in the building, a God who don't believe in God. Who? Uh, a God. Bro, I believe in God. I just don't believe in, like, the mass concept of God. I think, mm. like, we are the actual gods, and, like, we possess some of the dope shit that's in the Bible. Um, but I, I, I do believe in God, bro. I just ain't like we. That's, that's a us thing, not necessarily a... Seeking an outside deity or entity for the for God per se. Mm, so when you say you believe in God, it's just us. Ex- explain f- further into that. I got you, bro. So like, I had a conversation with some folks recently, and I asked them like, "What do people typically pray for?" And they was like, "You know, shelter, guidance, protection." And I just simply asked like, "Well." Why the fuck when we consider other people gods or ourselves gods? Because we literally provide such. Mm. I think a lot of people just have a savior complex. So it ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. Like, I'm learning. I'm working on my empathy. And I'm being more understanding of other humans. And I just realized, bro, like, a lot of people do need an actual god. They need mm. some form of structure that they can abide by that helps them stay in alignment with being a good person. I don't, I, I, I don't need that. Like, I kind of don't need a book to tell me, you know, like, thou shall not steal or mm. thou shall not fuck over their mom and dad. Cause I just kind of know those things. But, yeah, bro, it's some dope shit in the Bible. It's a lot of things in the Bible that I do agree with, but it's a lot of things I'm like, shit's preposterous. But No, I'm with you. And yeah. we get shit. I'm not scared to have this conversation because I do believe in God, right? Yeah, yeah. And spiritual uh, and in man, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I, I can recognize there's some bullshit in the Bible, too. Right. Let's be real. <laughs> nah, and I'm fact. not scared to say that. It's, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. Um, I guess when I look at it, though, you know, and, and it's it's crazy that you say, or it's uh, it's, it's interesting that you say like people need like a savior, like right. a savior, right? I look at it as faith based, mm-hmm. right? So I I don't even, you know, I wouldn't even say I'm Christian 100 mm-hmm. percent right now because I just don't know, but I'm more spiritual for bro, sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? I do I, I do believe that um I believe in karma for sure, absolutely, bro. Both ways, good and bad, yep. right? I mm-hmm. believe in um you know you going to get out of something what you put in, absolutely. Right? I with believe you. in um. If you do bad amongst pe- people, you're going to get bad done. Yeah, she's going to double back, for sure. Right. So, I, like, just being honest, like, I'm not here to to fight yeah, yeah. your belief or nothing like that. But I do believe that, bro, it's somebody mm-hmm. that protects me. Right. You know what I'm saying? If it's God, uh, Muhammad, uh, yeah, yeah. it's somebody. So for me, bro, I feel like we, my version is we dibble and dab between, like, our higher and our lower self. Mm. So, like. People will make a, a a better decision on something they was gonna do and be like, look at God. And a lot of times, I think that voice that you hear in your head or that not saying forcing my belief on you, but I'm Go saying, ahead, do your thing. I'm saying like that voice we hear in our head is our higher conscious telling us like what's really the right shit to do at this moment. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times we just dibble and dabble in our lower conscience, so we look for something higher to actually guide us. When in all actuality, our gut, our intuition, and our discernment most times already tell us when something's some bullshit and we don't need to go or. 
we see the signs. We we know we shouldn't be on this side of town. This side of town is time of night. Like we be having hella common sense, but I think a lot of people run from their common sense because they're seeking like they just have a belief system, bro. Like it got to be something greater. It, it got to be something bigger than me. Like I can't be that individually powerful that I can just guide myself. And like what people consider to be faith, I feel like it's discipline, willpower, and mm-hmm. like just having the 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 balls to will shit into fruition. Mm. So like I, I give people this I give I give people this example all the time. Like if somebody break into your house during the holiday season, you got one set of people that'd be like, the devil show is busy. But then you have 10 people on the other side of the room that's like, well, that was God teaching you a lesson because you know you you're you're practicing a uh, gluttony at that moment because you overdoing it. You ain't have to buy all that shit. The kids ain't need all this. You overspend this, you overspend that. So for me, for me, bro, really, it's a, a lot of it's just perspective. Mm. And what I realized too, bro, with religious people, like, we kind of like, bro, we just all humans trying to figure this shit out at the end of the day. For sure. And we got way more in common than we actually don't have in common. So that's why, like, I align with hella people who are religious because a lot of the shit I believe in is in the Bible or it's carried out by people who follow the Bible. So, but yeah, it's, it's just as far as that concept, bro, I really feel like that's our higher frequency that we be speaking to. And a lot of times we just run from ourselves because we've been programmed to leave, programmed to believe like it's no fucking way that you can be like the man behind your success. You got to get a, got to get a glory to somebody else. Like, bro, think of heart surgeons and people be like, thank God. Like, nah, bro, that motherfucker went to school for a hundred years and got a degree so he can cut your chest open and figure out what the fuck going on. Alarm clocks, like, if God genuinely wakes us up, then why do we use alarm clocks? We could just holler at him at night and be like, Lord, I need to be up by 515. But we rely on this shit that another man created to be the tool that actually wakes us up every morning. So, But yeah, bro, I'm, I'm, um, I, I, I salute everybody. My biggest thing I tell people is like, if that book make you a better person, by all means, like, Hold that motherfucker tight and live and die by it to make sure that you be like the most dopest, honorable person that you could be while you're on this motherfucker. I just feel like I don't necessarily need a book. When I wake up, I talk to that higher part of myself and then we just gonna kick the day off and go do what we need to do. Mm. And and just and that's why I think um because I agree with what you're saying, mm-hmm. right? But I, I do believe that that higher part of yourself, mm-hmm. and we might be saying the same things just in different ways, right? Absolutely, I bro. That, that higher part of yourself is God, right? right. It's not in, in human flesh. And I do right. believe that, like, there's certain things in my life, bro, I would be a fool to say I don't believe in somebody. To be right. honest, I'm going to keep it 100, mm-hmm. right? Because, and I'm pretty sure you can relate, bro. We came through we came through some hard times, bro. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, granted, our parents was there to have our back, but it had to be a, a force way stronger than that. I'm just being straight up. I come <laughs> I from you, the bro. hood, the trenches, the, yeah. the projects of Baltimore, mm-hmm. bro. You feel me? And, like, I done seen some shit, man. Right. And by the grace of God, I, you know what I'm saying? Just being real. Like, mm-hmm. that's just... That's how I look at it, and, I, right, right. and, and now I'm glad that we could have these conversations because that's what the platform is about. Right. As long as you believe in something, you're able to articulate it. A lot of oh, people, yeah, hell yeah. A lot of For people sure. can't even, they can't even give you a why. You get know what I'm saying? But I don't <laughs> believe in something. So I'm I like, meet motherfuckers like that every day, bro. Well, on social media, I say. Yeah, like, what do you stand on? Right, I, mean, right. I mean, I just, I, shit, I seen Derek talk about it, so. Right, right. And, and, and that's why I be trying to be careful with the conversations because... It's more to a motherfucker than what you see, clearly. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, clearly. Sure. So it's like, and, and I'll be a fool to judge another, another man, right? Because right? right. I'm, I'm only judging myself for real. I Absolutely. feel like, I don't know, man. When, when is it, and I don't want to get too preachy, it's just mm-hmm. when it's about, it's more than just <laughs> what we see in the human flesh. Like you, you said, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the clock to wake us up, right. the doctor to save us, it's about faith, though. Mm-hmm. Right? I think, um, how do you explain that? So, like, if you, you said, bro, I don't ever want to work for, and this is tied to your story, I don't ever mm-hmm. want to work for nobody else, right? But right. I know I uh, I got a problem pro- procrastinating, so Absolutely. what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these tats on my face so I, I'm forced to not work for everybody else. Right. You had to have some type of faith in you that came from something to understand that, bro, I'm going to get it regardless. Come so, on. So, bro, for me, my, my my faith is based on, not even necessarily faith, but bro, my belief system, bro, just solely, solely hangs on my shoulders. Mm. So I feel like preparation Prepar- when you prepare, you necessarily don't move with faith because you kind of like, you have a readiness for whatever coming with life. Like, I shot somebody before, right? I don't feel like God had anything to do with that. Mm. It's the fact that I train. So whether motherfucker close range or far, however he coming, like, I'm trained to get to it, get a precise shot, fully extend, do whatever I need to do. So for me on my end, bro, 
it's it's more so preparation and just having that readiness on my own time to know like when whatever situation presents itself, we gonna prevail. Mm. And I will say this too, bro. I I do feel like I agree with you on the faith aspect. I just think my faith lies in myself rather than something else. Because, bro, you I agree with you. You got to have some type of faith to be like, shit. I'm gonna get ten million. How? So, nigga, either you crazy and you yeah. blindly talking. Or it's something in it's you something. that believes you genuinely can go get ten million. So I do agree on the faith aspect. I just think a lot of my, like my faith overall, I ride on me. I blame mm-hmm. me for all my good and my bad. I feel like all my amazing shit, all my terrible shit, is my fault, and it's a reflection of my thoughts, my actions, and my words. Whatever I put out into this motherfucker, I'm gonna get back tenfold. Mm-hmm. Now that's why I say I, I think we we definitely saying the same thing, just in different is. It's, it's so many different uh, messengers, right? Right, right? The message, I think, is, is similar, <laughs> if not the same, to be honest. Yeah. You feel me? So I think, and even when you said, like, I kind of, like, blame everything on me. I, yeah. Like, my motivation, I ask anybody, I tell them every day, my motivation is me. Right. Right? Because no matter how many kids I could have, mm-hmm. how many parents I could have, how many people that looked out for me, mm-hmm. if any of those people ever let me down, mm-hmm. I can't afford to lose motivation in them. I right. can't find my motivation in nobody else but that person in the mirror. Absolutely. Because I ain't never going to let me down. And right. even when I let me down, I'm going to be the only one that's going to forgive myself how I can forgive myself. Right, for sure. Damn. Nah, that's some real shit, bro. Damn, man. Welcome welcome here, man. Appreciate it, bro. Nah, no problem, dog. Uh, yo, you, you got a uh, special, special story, right? Mm-hmm. We touched on some of it a little bit and we talking about the tattoos. Yeah. I think that, of course, that's probably the first thing that comes to mind when everybody sees. Right, right. 33 now. Yeah. You made the decision at what, like 20? I was 20, 20, 22. It was 2012. Oh, was Two, yeah. February 2012, I got the first one. And it was like, what, 23 when you got all of them? Because uh, it, it was shortly after. Bro, I went crazy. When I got the first one, I was like, oh, that shit don't hurt that bad. And I had like seven more by the next week. Mm. And I think today, bro, I ain't got a tattoo in so long, but today I think I'm at 42 on the face mm. alone. I've sat down over 30 times to get a face tattoo. I know that. Mm. But I lost count a minute ago. But yeah, bro, I started at 22. By the time I hit 23, I probably had like 20 easy. I went crazy with it though. So now, knowing what you know now, right, is there any regrets there? Hell no, nah, bro. I ain't gonna lie, because if I hadn't got these, bro, I'd probably have a job right now. I'd be mm. struggling like a motherfucker, because my procrastination is that serious. Mm. I tell anybody, bro, I think I'm one of like the most well off procrastinate motherfuckers that ever meet, because I be bullshitting a lot. Mm-hmm. But I have this great habit of like, when it's crunch time, I over deliver. And that shit ain't good. I'm not even gonna like encourage nobody to do that because you could miss opportunities or you may not have that motor in you. But bro, I'm the type of motherfucker. If you like, I'm gonna give you six months to get this shit done. At five months and twenty days, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start it then. I'm gonna crunch in ten days and then we're gonna deliver like, you know, a finished dope ass product. But that shit is not healthy for your mental. That shit ain't healthy for your physical. It ain't healthy at all. So I wouldn't recommend nobody to do that shit because it is, it is mentally and physically draining. To like take a year worth of work and cram that shit in a month and put yourself under all that unnecessary pressure. How do you draw the line, or where do you draw the line between um, excuses and reality? Because you saying that you you're procrastinating. Of course, that's good that we own our shit, mm-hmm. but eventually we gotta get over that. Like we right. men, right? And, mm-hmm. I, and and that's the that's the beauty in these conversations when I talk to men because we can talk to each other as men. Right, you right. feel me? A lot of people just don't be on that shit, right? Yeah, so like. Yeah. Understanding that okay, I'm a procrastinator. Right. That's good. The mm-hmm. first, the first step to uh, admitting, yeah, is is, mm-hmm. is, rec- is recognizing, right? Yeah. Rec- recognizing. <laughs> so we can understand that okay, I see I have a problem, right? But the next thing from that problem is to to do better and get better, right? right. One could say putting tattoos on my face because I know that I'm, a, I'm gonna be forced to do something else can kind of be a an excuse. How do we right. draw the draw the line between you understanding that I got a problem and fixing it, mm-hmm. far as letting it be my crutch or being an excuse? I got you, bro. Um, bro, I'm not gonna lie. I'll keep it real with you. I still struggle with that shit. I've been a, April make eleven years of an entrepreneur. I still struggle with that shit to the day. Come on, bro. I still struggle, Talk to me, dog. bro. I, I tell anybody like I'm a grown man. I don't enjoy paying bills. I don't like driving. I don't like reading directions. I like convenience. My life is built around convenience. So if that shit not super easy in terms of, I'm cool with hard work. But if the process of getting to the hard work is not easy or clearly laid out, I, like, dead the whole project, dead the whole everything. Bro, to be real, bro, my pops, shout out to my pops. I got the dopest pops in the world, bro. He pay, like, probably, like, 60% of my bills, 70% of my bills. I only Mm. pay my bills because they know, like, 
Bro, one thing I've learned about myself is like when you identify your strong suits, don't fight that. Don't fight who you actually are. It's cool to work on who you are, but don't fight who you are. Mm. So when I identify what I suck at, I just brought people in that can alleviate what I'm terrible at, what they're amazing at. I'm good at making us money. I'm good at us getting guns and training. I'm good at buying a bunch of houses, buying a bunch of gold. I'm good at leading. But when it comes to like the dynamics of, oh, uh, we finna go get a stroller, put it together. No, I'm not putting a stroller together. I call Tash for Rabbit. It. I, that, that's the people I call. They come to the house and do that shit. I'm not the person, like, my pops hit me and were like, hey, don't forget, you got to pay taxes on all them houses. Don't forget, you got to do this. So, yeah, bro, one, one thing I'm going to tell people and be real with, bro, is I'm a big kid at heart. I ain't, I ain't never grow up. Life never. And I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I, I think it's an amazing thing. And I feel bad for the people who life has, like, corroded that much that they forgot to be a kid. They forgot to, like, be free. They forgot to, like, have days where they just fuck off and just live and be wild and be young. But I'm a big kid, bro. I, I get paper. I teach the fuck out of my children. I lead my family. But other than that, I'm not the man to call for nothing else. Like, I'm good at what I'm good at. And I'm not even trying to be good at no other shit. So, yeah, bro, I still procrastinate. To, to say the least, like, just give me an example. Um, I've always had this rule, like, if we can't buy it three times, don't buy it. But recently, I've realized, like, I put way too much pressure on myself just cashing out on everything. Mm. So, like, I just, I'm closing on my ninth crib up here on Monday, on the 31st. Congratulations and for that. Appreciate it, bro. And, bro, my realtor, like, real dude hit me and was like, listen, I, I followed you for a while. I know who you are. Like, I, I know know who you are. And I listen to you talk. And she's like, I know you struggle with paperwork. That ain't your style. So she's like, I'm going to bring somebody in. He'll hold your hand lo- along the whole process. Like, bro, I'm a, I am 33, but I got another motherfucker that's like pra- work on, basically, he's like my real estate handler. He come through and call the tax people. He called insurance. I, I'm just not good with that shit, bro. Mm. I'm not good with those things. So I don't think it's necessarily procrastination no more. I'm just willing to admit, like, don't hand me no paperwork. Or you're willing to accept what you just, yeah. you're just not good at. I'm not good at that. And I, don't, and I don't even care to be good at that. That's one part of my life that I don't want to conquer and don't want to tackle, like, let somebody else use 10,000 hours of their whole entire existence, coll- existence collectively to do paperwork. I don't want to do that. I want to have fun. I want to smoke weed. I want to play with my kids. I want to run around the backyard. I want to shoot guns and, and talk shit and hang out. That's what I want to do. I think there's a lot to learn in that, right? Mm-hmm. As much as we can disagree, but I think it's the, the, the important part of it is I was able to accept what I was good at and spend more time trying to get better at that instead of wasting time or not even wasting time instead of taking time away from what I'm good at to put into something that I'm right. not good at. Exactly, bro. Like, I serve my family best by doing what I do. I'm going to get us a big old bag of money on the internet. I'm going to market. I'm going to make sure everybody become a household name. I'm going to brand my children, brand my family. And like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take us to the promised land. Now, the paperwork, once we get to the promised land, don't hand me that shit because mm-hmm. I don't want to read it and I ain't signing nothing. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the morning meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Okay. Trying to digest it, right? Because, like, again, we go to free go from this 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 line, this mm-hmm. thin line of, you know, where did we draw the line from making excuses to reality? Mm-hmm. Right. And you're saying, like, bro, basically ain't no excuse. I know I'm not good at it. Fuck it. I'm not about to spend no time on it. Yeah, it is the, what it is. The, the reality is I don't like spending like, I'm only going to get this shot once. I don't like spending my time doing shit that I don't like doing. Mm. If I don't genuinely like doing something, don't task it to me because I'm not going to do it. How do we, I want to say how do we grow in, the, in, in, in that mindset, right? Mm-hmm. 
how do we grow in so many aspects of life when we're dealing with other people? Because when, if I'm just me, mm-hmm. I could live like that forever. Right. But the moment I add a child, the moment I add a woman, mm-hmm. the moment I add co- colleagues, That's right now fact. I can't just be in <laughs> my own head. How do I? How do we grow in that? In that, spe- in, in that sense of being a father, of being a husband, of being a a, a boss, of mm-hmm. being a, a a coworker. You know what I'm right. saying? How do we grow in those in, in those places with that so, mindset? So, bro, I'm not gonna lie. With that mindset. Um, I think you have to create a value list, right? You have to decide, like, who in your circle is worthy of you actually working on yourself or mm-hmm. adhering to their standards. I have a really, really small circle. Like, if anybody go to my gram, they ain't going to see no pictures with nobody. I don't hang out. I be in the crib all day. I either be with my kids, my pops, or a woman. But I'm not. We not outside. So for me, bro, it is... It is pretty simple. Now, granted, I got seven kids. That's a lot of different personalities I have to adhere to, but I'm with that. I love my kids. I, like, intentionally made every single one of them except for one of them. But for me, bro, I value very little people. And I'm not saying I don't value them as far as their existence, if they died or not. But I'm just saying, like, they're not worth me, like, doing all that inner work to work on myself and evolve to this person that spread themselves thin for a 100 different people to keep them happy. I got maybe like 10 people that I give a damn about enough of their opinion and their happiness. Other, and seven of them is my kids. But other than that, bro, I don't give a fuck how people receive it, how they take it. They don't get access to me anyway, so how they feel don't matter. But for the people that's in that space, yeah, they have to decide who worth it. Because like, like I said, bro, we only get this shot one time. So when you gauge, you could gauge the average lifespan in America. It's, it's 70, 72 and a half years, I think. When they start to really audit their their circle, and I tell you this all the time, by auditing your circle, like, have motherfuckers grown you or slowing you, that'll help you to begin to dictate, like, who even worth you working on yourself or listening to their pain anyway. Another thing I do, bro, is I have, I got two boxes I move with every day, a consideration box and an I don't give a fuck box. 90% of the conversations I have with the shit that gets sent my way go into the I don't give a fuck box. There are very few people who I actually consider, so... It's still not a lot of stress on me to try to evolve or be a better person or ask somebody, you know, what's your love language or what's your pain points or how can I be a better a better partner to you, a better dad, X, Y, Z, because my list is short as a motherfucker. Damn, man. I think um, it's like I can learn so much from it, mm-hmm. just being honest. And I'm enjoying this conversation so much respectfully because... I am on the fence of not agreeing with everything. Mm-hmm. But that's why I'm loving the conversation. Right. That's what makes great conversation for me. For sure. Right? And I think about, when, when I hear that, I think of like, let's say, you got a small circle, right? Mm-hmm. So you really don't care too much about too many people, right? right. But the people that you do care about. And that's, right. a, that could be all of us, right? Right. But then you have those those one-off situations like, for example, Kanye West. Mm-hmm. One of the huge fans of Kanye West. But Kanye West recently, he said a lot of bad things. One of the yeah, worst wilding. one of the worst things for me though, right? I'm not gonna yeah. say about the other thing. One of the worst things for me that he said was his knee wasn't even on his neck like that. Yeah, bro. That's very insensitive. You, it's certain shit you don't bro. But when lie, you don't care come, come talk. It's certain shit you don't speak on. But when you don't care about people, why would I why would I care not to speak on it? So bro, that's why I feel like somebody First off, bro, so I'm 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 gonna start from the top. <laughs> I did practice empathy while watching him, bro. I think he's troubled internally. And he need like somebody to like fuck business and imagery and PR. That nigga need a different type of hug, bro. Mm. Because the the time he was on on that whole interview, like he came in on bullshit. Like, like the nigga just looked like he came there for the smoke. Can't like fuck it up. I wanna I wanna <laughs> come kick some fucking doors in. But so I feel like on the empathy side, bro, that that man need help that YouTube can't give him. Mm. Doing an interview with nobody else can give him. But number two, bro, he, see, bro, for him, he's seeking acceptance. Mm. He has to care. Because in the structure that we in, if you say certain shit, then you don't get accepted. Like, I ain't gonna lie, bro, if, if a nigga really up five billion... Bro, I couldn't imagine me even like mustering the energy to go to travel somewhere to be on bullshit. Mm. So, bro, yeah, it, it it to me, bro, his, that interview clearly showed like it's something internally wrong with him, bro. It it, it got to be, and I get it. Like, it may, it may be his kids. That's a sensitive thing. A motherfucker kill you by their kids. Mm-hmm. But yeah, bro, in his case, he has to care because he's looking for acceptance into certain rooms. Mm. Now, like I hear that shit, he be talking about independent and ownership, but. 
Bro, if that was really the case, you would just hold your nuts on these niggas and keep doing what you've been doing. You ain't gonna choose. You ain't gonna go on a world tour to complain about how niggas don't fuck with you. But isn't that? I mean, clearly that's not giving a fuck about your people or other people, right? He's right, saying no, for all sure. type of anti-Semitic verbiage, right? Mm -hmm. He's saying most importantly to me, right? So much shit about his community, us right. African American black people, right? Us, right? Slavery, slavery was a choice. All yeah. this, all this, like. Bro, you you know this it's, bullshit. You I'm know just, some of the most the, the like the most head scratching shit. He kept referencing the labels and how they ran by the Jews and this and that and how they basically poisoning the culture. But then the nigga kept saying how he want to work with Future and he want to work with this artist. And I'm just saying, I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> ain't these the same niggas that poison? I'm like, you know what, bro? I ain't gonna lie, I had to cut the shit out. I ain't watch. I just like. Bro, bro done smoked some shit or took something before he got on. I mean, it's drink champ, so he he drunk as a motherfucker. Who knows? But bro wilding right now. I only say that to say, though, he clearly, it can be perceived as he don't care. Mm -hmm. I feel like in no situation, not that he clearly cares, but he, you should care. Right. right? I'm, I'm, I'm on a level of, I have, we talking about influence. I have such right. a big influence That's that I fact, should bro. care about the world, right? Yeah. And when I hear you say this, right? Come on, like let's be real. I'm not reaching out to you if mm -hmm. if you're not somebody of substance, right? Right. So I I see your value, right? Mm -hmm. I admire your value and I respect your value, mm -hmm. right? So when I hear you say like I only care about this small circle of people, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. what about the people that care about you? What about the people that you're you're so you're in face every single day? I got you, bro, and I get exactly what you're saying. But this is the thing for me. I'm not seeking validation, acceptance, and I actually bask in my isolation. Mm -hmm. I genuinely feel like I really have no business being around most people or in most environments anyway because I understand, like, the value that I carry and my energy. Mm -hmm. And I do, bro, I ain't gonna lie, like, most days, bro, just scrolling my timeline, like, on some human shit, I really be feeling like I was dropped in the wrong place. Like, I ain't supposed to be here. Y'all niggas is shooting up daycares. Y'all niggas be fighting about McDonald's cups. Like, it's a lot of wild shit going on where I just be like, bro, where the fuck am I? So for me, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I thoroughly enjoy my isolation. And I'm not looking to be validated or accepted. So for me, I'm able to speak freely because I'm being true to me. And at the end of the day, that's my top priority. How mm -hmm. anybody receive it after that, that's their business. And they're entitled to feel how they want to feel. And I'm totally okay with if a motherfucker was like tomorrow, like, bro, we going to all unfollow this nigga. Mm. Because I seek, except like, I look for my children to brag about me and say they proud. I don't really look for adults. Like, my mama proud, my daddy proud, my sibling, my three brothers proud, my children proud. I'm 33. Shit, I did my thing. Like, if you ask me at 33, bro, I I got an A-plus with the life shit. So I, I've kind of reached a level of completion where it's just like, bro, take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. But I do understand being influential in the responsibility. Some things are not meant to be publicly stated. Like, bro, I done say, I say wild shit all the time. Like, if niggas think I be wild on the internet, if they heard the conversations I have in private, they'll really be like, uh. But I do, so, let me say this, bro, because what you're saying just hit me. I do care about, I care about people's feelings from an empathetic standpoint, but I do not care if they fuck with me because I don't care to be fucked with anyway. I be mm -hmm. in my house on my solo shit hiding out anyway. But I am considerate of people's feelings. That's why, like, sometimes I may type some shit out and delete it. Or I may mm. be like, damn, the way that's going to be received ain't going to be a positive way. And I don't even want niggas to think I'm that much of an asshole. We all have our moments, but I, but I will say this, bro. I care about the children. I don't too much care about the grown people, but I love the fuck out of their children, which is why I go so hard with mines and share it so, you know, people could pick that game up and put the same things and steal the same things into their children if they wish to. I think I'm the same way when it comes to the children, right? Yeah. Because I think... That's why I'm so, I don't even want to say careful because I'm unapologetically me too. Sometimes mm -hmm. it, it don't work for me, but when the time, when it does work for me, it is, it's 10 times for, 10, tenfold, right. right? I feel like, um, but the people, I mean, the children, I think, I try to do a good job at like the messages that I give off because these are the only people that's really look well. You got some adults that just don't know better, know no better, but most of the times the children are the ones that's easily influenced. They Absolutely. hear what we see. Mm -hmm. They hear what we say, they look at what we do, right. and they try to mimic it. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? And I think that's why the com a lot of the conversations that be had just be trash. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not to talk down on nobody, but it's just be like, bro, it's kids out there who watching this mm -hmm. who want to follow your footsteps. Right. I was one of them. Right, right. Until I learned. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Nah, and I, I want to say this too, bro. Um, When it comes to the care part, I'm... 
I'm currently evolving with that, and I'm working on that because I just don't practice empathy at all, but I have been practicing it lately, which makes me way more mindful of how I treat people. Mm. How I, I'm still going to judge. I'm judging motherfuckers the day I die. But I'm way more, I'm way, I'm not as quick to judge or mm. to write people off. Because I do understand, like, bro, people come from different backgrounds. They was raised different. Like, they went through, they got different traumas. They got different shit they dealt with that, like, bro, I just, bro, I've been doing so much evolving as of late, but, like, I remember having a mindset, like, well, if niggas ain't grinding, they ain't doing this, they can't sit with us. Like, y'all y'all don't deserve it. But, like, bro, like, you would, so you would dispose of a, a good fucking human because he doesn't have your work ethic? Like, mm. what if that nigga didn't learn that shit? Or, 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 or what if he's never been desperate or... What if his parents never instilled that, like, so he's a trash-ass human because he don't have your work ethic. So now that I am more empathetic, bro, I do look at things differently. So I ain't gonna lie, in a year or so, bro, that care conversation will probably go a lot different because I have been changing over the last couple months, like, and just something else I noticed about myself that I've yet to share publicly, but, bro, what I learned about myself doing shadow work is that that whole I don't care shit is really a trauma response. (laughs) Um, come on, I've been hurt by people before and disappointed. So I put up a certain bravado and persona because it basically runs people mm-hmm. off anyway. Like, oh, he an asshole or he this and that. But somebody said that shit to him like, bro, you got to care about us, nigga. You've been teaching us for like how many years? How the fuck you don't care? And I was like, damn. You clearly care. I do care, but I be hating the nigga shit y'all be doing. And that's when I realized like, bro, you actually do care. <clears throat> you just use that verbiage because... For me, bro, the way I look at it, like, if I'm standoffish and I don't invite people in and I'm not welcoming, it lessens the odds of me being disappointed or hurt. Mm. But in all actuality, it does, but in all actuality, like, it's a false narrative, because, nigga, because on a soul level, you actually do care. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why I don't watch police shootings. That shit bothers me all day. I don't like seeing, like, headlines with children involved. That shit fuck with my head all day. I don't know how to just be like, damn, that's their problem, and walk off. Like, shit like that, eat away at me. So, no, bro, I... I do care, but I'm working on, like, full circle caring and figuring out where the disconnect is with me internally. Why, like, I don't want to care knowing goddamn well I do want to care. I don't know, bro. I have internal battles. Bro. I just nah, I'm with you. My mind and my heart, bro, they 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 be at battle a lot of days. Bro, I, I know you don't believe in, uh, like, the God and the mm-hmm. spirit, but, uh, see, I'm a Gemini. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll be believing in the Zodiac shit when I want to. So, like, I get it. When you say be fighting yourself, sometimes right. I be having a, a fight with myself. They say we got two sides. <laughs> <laughs> so, I get it. Bro, my daughter, Gemini, she, she is, yeah. <laughs> Derek will wake up like, hey, y'all. Then Derek will wake up like, don't come to my fucking room. Oh, everybody get out. Yeah, so I, I get it, man. Um, Isn't it crazy, though, how... I'm, I could just assume you from Tampa, Florida, mm-hmm. right? Um, Was it... Uh, Bad neighborhood? I don't want to just assume that. No, nah, bro. Um, I was raised, bro. My mom, my mom is a teacher. I, I mean, she's still a teacher. I retired her in two thousand eighteen. She's still a teacher. My pops is retired Secret Service. Mm. So, not taking that from my mom. I had an amazing mom. My mom, environment wise, did have us in darker environments because financially she was nowhere near my pops once they got a divorce. He had us in dark environments too. But it was always temporarily because he had the means to just be like, oh, we out of here. Oh, we finna go to this state. Oh, we going to this. I done been like, took me out of the country and I was a teenager. Like, I seen a lot of shit with my pop. So my mom, yeah, bro, we we was in different environments based on how much bread she had. But with my pops, we was too, but it, I don't know how to explain it, bro. Like, he had the power, literally, if we could be like, we don't like this shit. I had a type of daddy, like, be like, all right, say less. He'll change that shit by tomorrow. My mama more so, the energy was like, well, this is what we stuck at right now because I'm struggling and I got to figure shit out. So, yeah. Okay, but you black at the end of the day. So oh, we, yeah, for sure. So we come from dark places just in history, Yeah, right? for sure. Um, you know, isn't it crazy how what we go through as children mm-hmm. affects our, all of our adulthood? Yeah, bro. And if we don't go back and deal with those things, like what I realize is we'll revert to mm. that same behavior and mm. that same traumatic response. Like, um, I was talking about this the other day. Um, bro, I don't, when I shower, I don't put a shower curtain all the way back. Mm. That's because I was introduced to Candyman as a child. And I realized at 33, bro, that's a traumatic response that I have not let go of. Um, 
bro, it's a lot of shit I do that I, I dealt with as a child, whether it was movies or real life or real shit. Like, I remember somebody broke into my mama's house. So, like, to this day, bro, I check my locks every night. Which I think is still necessary, but I check my lights every night. I got 42 cameras on my house. I got security that sit, sit on my house 24 hours a day. Those are all traumatic responses from shit I dealt with 20 years ago that still fuck with me. And because I have yet to make peace with those parts of me, I'm still on edge with those parts of me. So and, hell yeah, bro. That shit, that shit affect us till we're 80 years old if we don't never address it. Nah, facts. And, and I was getting at it because like even the part of not caring, right? Like mm -hmm. you said, you just started getting to this, this part where you want to be empathetic and you right. really want to understand people. But a lot of that, like you said, came from a place of the past that she wasn't able to tap into yet. Right. <laughs> you thinking back now, just because it sounds like you had a, your pops was there, your mom's was there. You get what I'm saying? He was good parents or the best of parents that he could be. Yeah. Where did that being scared to get let down come from? Um, uh, bro, a lot of that stemmed from my mom. Um, uh, I'm her middle son. So my younger brother is 10 years younger than me. My older brother four years older. Um, my older brother is real troublesome. And me and her literally had this conversation probably like a month ago because I, I held on to a lot of shit where I was, I've been mad at her for like over 20 years, bro. Like retire her and all. My mama lived two doors down. I bought her a million dollar crib, but I still like was harboring some anger with her. Mm. And anytime we had disagreements, some shits would go way left. And she would ask like, what's really up? Like what I did to you? And I didn't want to talk about that shit, so I just blow it off and be like, nothing, man. Like, you just tried me today. But really, like, I'm harboring some shit. But anyway, bro, you have an older son who's troublesome, and then you got a baby, because I'm 13 around this time. And she told me sure that she's like, I ain't going to lie, son. You always been strong. You always been strong-willed. You always been independent. So a lot of days, I, like, literally forgot you. I just overlooked you because I'm running. But your brother in and out of jail at se as early as 17 years old, running behind him. And then I got a baby over here, and you the independent one. So she's like, I ain't gonna lie, a lot of nights I just looked at you like, oh, he's strong, he got it. Like, he got this shit figured out, which I did. But I realized, bro, like, that created that bond that I wanted with her, and, like, I wanted her to run after me, too, like she did my other two siblings. It just, it, it created a lot of, like, like a disconnect. Yeah, this, it was a disconnect there, which then led to a disconnect with all the women I done dealt with, mm. which then led to, like, you got to think, bro, like our mom and our dad is like our first responders when we get to this life shit. So if there's a disconnect with your first responder, then like you may fuck around and put a guard up because you don't ever want to feel that again. So I realized, bro, like that's that's basically what I did. And then when my brother, he got sentenced to 15 years in 2009. He'd been down 13 years at this point. But when And then when he left, that was like my next best responder that was going at that point. My brother used to save me from everything. He used to be on... Be on top of air, like that was my motherfucking hero. Like he came to my rescue every time some shit was going. So the disconnect with her and then the physical disconnect with him, it just really made me shut myself down and shut myself off to avoid any more disconnect, period. Mm. I would only let women in at that point. And then it still was a disconnect because I wouldn't let them go but go but so far because I'm internally mad at my mama, but I'm taking the shit out on all these women that I deal with, bro. So that shit was just not just that shit has been like it's been beautiful, but it's been a big mess at the same time. Mm, mm, mm. And it's crazy that we touched on that because that's real, right? And, yeah. and the fact that you can say not just because you understand that that wasn't a small piece. That was a huge that piece That's my whole my motherfucking life. life. Yeah, bro, I got seven kids, four baby mamas. Like, when I came to the realization, bro, I had to, and 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 shout out to um, the people who have helped me, like, understand the deeper parts of life on a soul level, the inner parts, but... Yeah, bro, I had to, like, call all my baby mamas and apologize and, like, have a sit-down convo with all of them and be like, hey, not that they was perfect, but, like, hey, it was a lot of shit that you was dealing with that you ain't even know, like, wasn't your fault. You you met a nigga that had, like, demons, but he just ain't shared those demons, and he took that shit out on you. Hmm. But, yeah, bro. So not, not even regress as far as the tattoos right now that we digging deeper. Pause. I think it's, it's even a more serious conversation of, if the if the tat tattoos could be a metaphorical thing, mm -hmm. right? You know, I open up like, do you have any regrets? Knowing what you know at 33, mm -hmm. now looking back at the life and the decisions that you made just as a child, or not even a child literally, but figuratively, mm -hmm. when you didn't know any better, do you ever look back and say, damn, I wish I would have made some different decisions? Yo, what's poppin'? 
This episode is sponsored by BK Juices. Look, man, if you're looking for some drinks that's refreshing and that's also healthy, make sure you check out BK Juices. You can find them online at bkjuices.com. A social media, Instagram is the real BK Juices, and Facebook is BK Juices. If you want 10% off, all you got to do is go online at bkjuices.com, enter the promo code JHill10. You get 10% off. Like I said, if you're looking for something that tastes good, that's refreshing, and that's also healthy for you, check out my people at bkjuices.com. That's BK Juices. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, the only thing in life I would do differently, only thing, the the second mother of my children, uh, we got two abortions. That's the only thing I do differently, bro. I, I would have gladly embraced having nine. Yeah, I would have had nine kids right now. But other than that, bro, all that shit, I'll do the same. I do it the same and I take it on the chin. Mm. And I ain't going to lie, bro, I'm grateful like my my shit coming full circle at 33. A lot of people don't get it till they 50, 60. I don't get the shit at all. But I am grateful that I get it now and I'm like undoing a lot of that hurt, a lot of that trauma from younger days so I can just be like a more free and like living and like receptive human. But no, nah, bro, I wouldn't change much. That would probably be it. Yeah, I know uh, not to do the, the, the audience a disservice, but sometimes the conversation is way more than what people see. Mm -hmm. This guy's lit. He does a lot of gold. Uh, he's getting a lot of money. He's rich. Uh, he uh, has homeschool with his kids. He, yeah. uh, there's a lot that he got going on, but this conversation is way more important than that right there. Bro, bro I ain't gonna lie. Bro, <laughs> and there ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. That's why I'm at in life. Like, people, people, like, motherfuckers literally here and there is like, damn, bro, we miss you saying click the link in the bio. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, I'm on some like human shit these days. I don't really care about the money. I don't care about none of that. I wanna get this disclaimer too. To anybody that's been seeing my content lately, I wanna be honest and say, like, I'm able to give y'all those reflections because I did get a bunch of money. So don't let me doing that sway y'all from getting y'all paper and staying on y'all mission and taking care of y'all families, cause that shit sound good, but it sound good because I already won. Mm. Most people like they give you that philosophical shit, like that's been their way of thinking their whole life. Like, no, nigga, you got 50 million put up. Of course you can talk like that and zen all day. It's and easy to go get some help. Yeah, it's, yeah, super You ain't got to worry about where you're going to sleep at. Exactly, bro. So I want to keep it real. If you on your if you on your paper right now, you on your you on your tunnel vision, man. Stay in your motherfucking sweet spot. And when it's time for when it's time to revisit the type of shit that I'm talking about right now, revisit it at that time, y'all. But don't let me sway none of y'all from y'all hustle. Submit y'all legacy or none of that. Because the shit I be saying, it sounds amazing. It is amazing. But it's only because, like, I won in so many other categories. I can now take that time to be like, I just think I just want to take six months just to work on my mental health. Mm. It's kind of hard to do that shit when the game pulling at you, the bills pulling at you, you got your family counting on you, society that we live in is pressurizing you to get money, do this, do that. So, Well, let's, let me give you a, a counter with that, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said, you a type of person that embrace what you're good at. Mm -hmm. and really don't give a fuck about what you're not good at. You find people to, to replace it, right. right? I think as men, mm -hmm. as an adult, it's not even just as boys, right? As men, if we could find something that we're good at, that we appreciate, that we love, right? Mm -hmm. We can win in it. Oh, for right? sure. And if we, if, we, if we can be content, a lot of times we come up <laughs> thinking contentment is a bad word. If we can be content at what bro, we have. I've been, bro, we've been, bro, because I've been there with so many years. Like, content? Know. the fuck content? No, bro, contentment is a beautiful fucking thing. When right. your brain can slow down, your heart rate slow down, and you're able just to be like, I'm loving this space I'm in, and life is flowing. I tell everybody, bro, I'm blowing and flowing. So, right. So I think, you know, a lot of times when we're when we're struggling with bills or we're struggling with things in our life, we aren't able to, like, you know, people. a lot of people fold under pressure. Yeah. Right? So, like, when we're struggling in things, they say when it rains, it pours. Mm -hmm. Right? Misery loves company. We we allow the world to dictate our attitude and our behavior. Right. I believe if we could find somewhere to be grounded and even through the storms, then we can still be able to self-reflect. We can still be able to heal because guess what? The same way misery loves company is the opposite. Yeah. Where they say money, make money. Right. right? So if you're in a good space, it's, it's going to flow into your life. So if you could find that way, right? Even yeah, through the bro, bullshit. Bro, you talking that shit right now for sure. I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? So I, it's like, it, always, it don't always have to be attached to money, but what happened as men... Mm -hmm. We aren't able to to really sit down until we get some money. Right. Right. Bro, so that's what happened with me, right? So when I came in the game, I blew up my first book. No, my second book, God's Amongst Men, Volume One, is the book that made me a best selling author, right? Mm -hmm. That book was all about affirmations, self development, and just like reaching your highest internal uh potential. That book a best that book made me a best selling author. Like that motherfucker made me hella money. Where I got fucked up, bro, is when I dropped my board game. 
that's when I first like smelt millions for the first time. And when I ain't gonna lie, bro, when I smelt that shit, I said, fuck self-development, <laughs> fuck all that soul shit. <laughs> Nigga, where the money at? I'm about to get this so, wrong fucking money. Right, bro. That's that's where like as I played, as I played my life back recently, bro, I was like, damn, that was a disconnect. That's where we said, fuck self, we gonna get a bag. And then we lose ourselves in the money. We lose ourselves in the materialism, the resources. We start working crazy hours. We neglecting our bodies, our children, all that, bro. So, bro, I'm 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 here with you, bro. I hear what you no, saying because you sure. you absolutely can be grounded and get paper in that arena because you're good at what you're at in your state of being grounded. It's just I know for me, bro. When I got like when I seen like a million, bro, that shit just it just enticed me on all different levels. Like, oh shit, we made one. Well, let's try to go get ten of them motherfuckers, and let's go get this. Mm. And then we just got we got lost in the sauce, like a lot of people do. I think. Um, are you around? I'm assuming you're around other people that's getting money like you. Do you find that a lot of these people are hard to talk to in the sense that you can't tell them nothing? Uh, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not around nobody else that get money like me. For real? Nah, bro. The closest, um, uh, me and Nip had a relationship. I talked to Banner all the time. Um, uh, I talked to Wall Street Trapper probably like once a month. Uh... Bro, yeah, bro, I don't be around nobody. Right, so I mean. when you look yourself in the mirror, <laughs> right, and if you think about it, out of all the people that you're around, I'm pretty sure they try to give you some ideas to help. Mm-hmm. Are you receptive or are you more neglected? Oh, fuck around, bro. Anytime banner pull up, oh, bro, I'm in student mode. Mm. Anytime, anytime, and it's it's certain shit that he had me helping with in the marketing. Learning That's somebody it. with money, though. I'm talking like your, your everyday peers. Like you said, you're not around people with money like that. Well, okay, some my everyday money. peers. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, bro. Anytime my pop says something, I listen. He's mm-hmm. still like I'm. And in terms of money and finances and success, like I've 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 lapsed my entire family, but hell no, my daddy talk, I'm listening, mm. bro. Even my mama talk. It, uh, her, she sprinkled religion in her shit, so I close my ears sometimes. <laughs> but I listen too, bro. Um, I have certain women in my life, or that have been in my life. Like I'm not gonna say of of all the mothers of my children, only one. But uh, Chelsea, when she talk, I absolutely listen. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I gauge people by their value and their wisdom. Mm. So, like, people that got results or people that really can, like, articulate and make logical sense. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. You done said some shit twice that I done listened to. Because there ain't a lot of people who can actually object with me and I can, like, actually hear them. Most people, I be like, this it is what the fuck you talking about, bro. <laughs> but you done said two things so far, bro, that already made me be like, wait, okay, bro, making some sense. No, I appreciate it. So, no, nah, bro. Uh, hell yeah, I listen, for sure. And I was just curious because, like, even think about the Kanye West thing I was telling somebody, I feel like it, you you can almost hear the arrogance in his voice even when he says, I'm a billionaire. Like, boy, you don't got no money. And it's like, I, I honestly see that because I ain't there yet. And I'm mm-hmm. cool and I, I could be in this space because I'm all right with that. But I say that to say a lot of my friends that's getting money mm-hmm. act like the same way when I'm trying yeah, bro, to tell them things man, like... character don't buy money. Nigga could be lame with money. Nigga mm-hmm. could be a bozo, all that, bro. Yeah, bro, he did... I, I can't remember who bro was talking to, but he was just like, I'm a billionaire, so you should shut up and listen to me. And I'm just like... But a lot of niggas with money act like that, bro. They might not be as that, that blatant. Yeah. But a lot of their body movements and justice be bro. on that type of time for <laughs> you. Be like, you trying to tell them something, they be like... Bro, I ain't gonna lie. I've been accused of that. But I had to explain to that person, like, no, I'm not disregarding what you're saying based on dollar amount. I'm disregarding it based on experience and wisdom. Mm. You thought, like, I hear your opinion, but... Can you can do you have anything to back up your your conversation? And niggas just be fat mouthing sometimes, saying anything. But if you pull their card, to be like, well, cool. If you a master teacher at that, hold my hand and, and show me the way. Mm. Oh, I ain't say all that. I was just oh, okay, okay. Then well, get take, take your ass on somewhere. A lot of niggas probably can't show you the way because they don't got the money you got. Bro. Well, no, I wrote like people that have came to me. We typically don't have money conversation. Okay, because I'm like the head honcho when it comes to the finances. So it'd be other shit. But you're right, bro. Like I've I've uh. That, too, is something I'm working on. Like, just hearing people out. Okay, like, i give an example. Um, one of the mothers of my children was like, you uh, you don't need to just be a money dad. Mm. And then I'm like, Oof. I ain't like, my honest <laughs> response, like, in my mind, I'm like, bitch, I'm not a money dad. You know I'm known for what I teach, what I taught our children. So in that moment, bro, rather than asking her, like, well, what you mean? Further explain. I took offense because the money dad shit triggered me. Mm. 
And then I just removed her whole voice at that moment and shut her completely down. And then I, but in retrospect, bro, I like, we had better conversations because I'll ask now, like, well, what you mean? Before I take offense or try to defend, it's like, what you mean? And then when she break it down, I'm like, oh, okay, shit. I took that shit the totally wrong way. I was about to cuss your ass out. But a lot of, but, and that's, that's why I say, bro, being empathetic, like, some people don't articulate as direct as I do. Mm. So the, her headline may be, don't be the money dad, but when she get to the, the meat of it, mm. she means something else. But I'll bite your motherfucking head off <laughs> off the roof. I'm like, money dad. Bitch, you better put some respect on my name. Now, you know I'm known for teaching because of what I taught our kids. Like, I'm the one taught them that shit. But, no, nah, bro, I agree. But, like, how Kanye do, I ain't never had them type of issues. Mm. Like, I'm I'm cool with pulling up a seat and listening for sure. No, I, I think it's great that we can have this conversation. And, I, and I'm so appreciative that I was able to get you at this point in your life. Yeah, yeah. Because the conversation is so much more better than what you bro, bring to the... T- like, we sure. can talk about your gold all day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not... Let me not say that because I don't want to seem like I'm downgrading somebody yeah. else's conversation, but... I just feel like for me, mm. these are the conversations, the growth, right? That 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 hit home for me. No, bro, for me too, because bro, I mean, it's the internet, bro. Everybody getting money. Everybody, da da da. Like, nigga, when you not recording no more, like, do you like yourself? Mm. Are your kids? Do, do your kids brag about you? Can your old lady? Can she brag? Is she proud? Like, that's the shit I hang my hat on. Like, nigga, who are you when that iPhone down? Yo, it's crazy. Um, I think I I say like. One of the, my best attributes mm-hmm. is my ignorance in this mm-hmm. space, in this e- interview space. Because a lot of times, like, I'm very receptive, I think. Mm-hmm. I listen to that. And niggas be like, yo, you should interview that person. I'm like, I bet. Yeah. So it kind of similar to you, right? Mm-hmm. Like somebody put me on, like a few people put me on with you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I bet. This nigga look yeah. good. But somebody, like, somebody was saying, like, something about, uh, like, you big on a family thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I think you spoke about her name. Chelsea? Yeah. That's your wife or? Huh. That's... That's why I said my best attribute is my <laughs> ignorance because I really don't know. So when I ask questions, it ain't to be messy. It's really because I just don't know. Yeah. So um, talk so bro, to me. So how does that? So bro, I'm not legally married. Don't okay. even believe in legal marriage at all. So you never was either. Never. Yeah, never was okay. and never will be. Okay. Uh, but that is the woman who like, not to say like I allowed, but like I allowed, and she was more than happy to designate herself as like I'm the wife. Mm. Like actual rings We didn't get around To doing the wedding yet Because she got pregnant We was doing other things But yeah So That's still here That's not like Y'all didn't break up Or nothing like that Um I don't know if you call it Break up bro She definitely was on some bullshit With that pregnancy stuff Uh, That's something too bro I had to learn to be empathetic too Because I didn't want to understand bro I ain't gonna lie I did not want to understand But I had people that stepped in Shout out to Uh Tanisha Nicole, which is another young lady that was in my life, but actually, like, she's in my, she was in my life on a, she's in my life on an intimate level, but she fucked with me enough that she helped me, like, mend other relationships that I was intimate in as well. Mm. So, like, it's literally, like, shout out to her because she gave me the wisdom in the game to even, like, hit Chelsea back and be, and be forgiving for all the weird ass shit that I felt like she was doing. Mm. So, yeah, bro. Um, Was Chelsea, before we even go to Tanisha? Tanisha. Was Chelsea the first woman that she was with during the pregnancy? You mean like we we dated throughout the pregnancy? Yeah. No, no, no. No? Derrick, I was with her mom during her pregnancy. Uh, Malaya, I was with her mom. No, bro, she wasn't first. Oh, I I don't even ask that because, like, for me, my Mm -hmm. first time having to go through... You got kids, bro? Yeah, I got a... Uh, well, I have a stepdaughter. Okay. But I've, like, you know, seen some things. Yeah, yeah. And I, pregnancy is different. Pregnancy emotions is different, it right? Is, bro. I asked that question because I feel like... I'm like, what, was that your first time seeing these emotions? Or was oh. it your first time seeing these type of emotions? Those type. Yeah. Chelsea is... Uh, bro, she is a beautiful storm. Mm. And what I've learned with beautiful storm, because I feel like I'm a beautiful storm too. Like I come with a lot of shit, but the end result gonna be amazing. I I know what it is. My girl gonna hate me. What's that? I know why. It's Scorpio. Yeah, bro. Scorpios <laughs> are hell, bro. Bro, they some amazing, <laughs> crazy motherfuckers, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm gonna tell you how wild my shit is, right? Hey, yo, we got my first it. first baby mama, she a Scorpio. Uh, Chelsea a Scorpio. Tanisha's a Scorpio. Oh, so you just love Scorpios? No, nah, bro, bro, they 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 cut up in a different way that we go hand in hand. For sure. Yeah. For sure. 
For sure. <laughs> For they sure. some crazy, bro. I'm a crazy motherfucker. I have like some interesting shit I'm into, and they and they support that shit 100. percent For sure, gonna hold your hand and walk straight to hell or heaven with you. For sure, <laughs> and I'm with you. <laughs> We're yeah. gonna talk about that too. Yeah, but seeing those emotions, right, and mm-hmm. and not being as empathetic as you are now, mm-hmm. it could be, it's easy to walk away or reject it. Right, right. Honestly, but did you ever think? And you might have had these conversations with Tanisha, but I'm looking at it on like some man time, right? We say mm-hmm. we married, it's like, bro, this is bigger than me now. Right. It's about my family. Mm-hmm. Did you ever stop to look at yourself in the mirror like that? Or was it just like, man, fuck this shit. I'm No, nah, bro, that's how I always looked at it. But she did. it was certain things. Like, I feel like family business doesn't hit the internet. Especially mm-hmm. if you know, like, you tied to a man who is influential. So it's very important that we protect. Oh. Our name and our image at all times. It's mm-hmm. just certain shit we don't let spill out because that could affect the family. That could affect the paper. And you have to remember, like, we got these big-ass houses and be on jets and do all this cool shit we do because I know how to get paper on the internet. So for me, bro, when she crossed that line, that's when I, I like, fully stepped back. I never shot back, but I just fully stepped back and was like, all right, this some, like, betrayal rat. Mob killer nigga shit, and I was just like, yeah. So this is why I'm gonna step out of the mix altogether, cause I'm taking this real personal. Cause I just don't play with my bro. Like I, it took me 11 years to get to where I'm at. I don't play with my last name. Mm. I took it took me years and years of content and research and videos and courses and books and curriculums and classes and all that shit to get to where I'm at. So anybody that's going against that, like, yeah, you you essentially become an enemy at that point. And I look at it on some mad shit, though. We only mm-hmm. got two things in this world, you know what I'm saying? Our mm-hmm. name and our word. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And that's a part of it, so I right. get it. But I'm looking at us, right? Mm-hmm. Forget the woman at this moment, like, man to man. Mm-hmm. Did you ever look at it or think, or even now, like, bro, it's something that I did to cause these things? No, for sure, bro. Uh, I definitely did, but I still was so disappointed and hurt how, about how she acted that I still, like, justify mm. me letting her go, in a sense. Like, because, bro, it was signs, like, she came to me before she left and started doing all the wild shit and was like, let's work it out, yada, yada, yada. But once you made me mad enough, like... Yeah, it's done. Yeah, it's done. Like, I don't negotiate with terrorists. I shut the fuck down and it'd be like, nah, I ain't got shit to say. So I ain't gonna lie, bro, for, like, three months of her pregnancy, we ain't speak. She would call, text, I ignore all that shit. And I told her, like, you know, you only allowed to text me. Don't call my phone. I ain't I ain't talking. Don't FaceTime me, yada, yada. And then, like, literally sat down with Tanisha. We had a conversation. She really, like, helped me see it from a different perspective. Picked up the phone literally 24 hours later, and shit was a breeze after What did that. she say to help you see it? Uh, Taking my account- accountability, bro, that I, I helped create this monster. Mm. And that just because, like, I'm over something that I did to somebody doesn't mean that they're over it. And I just got to respect that people grieve and let go of shit differently. They release traumas differently. Mm. So for me, bro, I was looking at Chelsea like, damn, sis, that shit was a year ago. Like, you wildin', bro. Like, you said you was over it. But just because somebody verbally say they over something don't mean internally they are. Well, they don't even know how to recognize when they are, to be honest. Right, They think bro. they are. But, like, like, shit, we are grown adults. We still have to deal with things that we learned or things that hurt us years ago. Yeah. Right? Now, we right, she be talking different. We, we was talking yesterday. She's like, you know, I know how to regulate my emotions now, so I don't lash out. She's like, I still may feel the way, but I know healthier ways to handle shit. And I was just like, okay, cool. That's Her acknowledging that was a big deal. Cause I, before, she just like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm over it. It happened. Like, no, bro, you still mad. Can I ask you this? Do you think... Y'all being so close mm-hmm. was almost the detriment as well. Because sometimes they say they, they love you for what they hate you for, right? Um, bro, I agree, right? Because, like I said, we have a lot of fun. And that so, fun turned into resentment, hatred. Like this, It's like, bro, we was just doing this together now. Right. When I say I understand, we're going to have a conversation. Can we talk? <laughs> so, look, check this out, right? I give you the, I give you the real spill. Uh, when I got with Chelsea... I had another kid on the way, and I moved as if I didn't have another kid on the way. Like, my mm. baby mama then hit her in the DM, like, oh, I'm pregnant by him. And I was just like, I blew this out, like, man, she just on some bullshit. Like, don't pay that shit no attention. The shit come out eventually, like, nigga, that's your kid. Like, you got another kid on the way, which I knew. I just ain't feel like addressing it with Chelsea, like, I don't even know how I was saying, like, that's my problem. Like, no, nah, bro, y'all in the full relationship, nigga, that's y'all problem now. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> 
This shit finally shit. come out, right? Yeah, nigga shit for <laughs> sure. <laughs> this shit, and this in the beginning, like, cause people, bro, people favorite line, like, did you cheat? I'm like, nah, bro, we cheat together. We don't have the type of problems. If we seen something we like, I'm not a talker. She gonna bag a motherfucker, and mm-hmm. she's very attractive. Like, she have a way with women. She would bag them, bring them, and then we do our thing. So cheating was never a thing. This baby was created before me and her even got together. But anyway, bro, I held on to like that lie or not addressing it for over a year. Finally come out. And then like took a whole nother year and she like, I'm over it. But I could tell, bro, like that after a while, like that's it was just certain triggers, bro. Like we'll go wild, like we'll have us a threesome orgy. We cut up. And then like she she just be in a weird space afterwards. And I'm like, what's up? Nothing. But I'm realizing, like, triggers are so random, bro. Like, seeing me fuck another woman, even though she enjoys it, it's triggering. Because, you know, babies come from sex. Mm -hmm. So, bro, I'm thinking, like, well, we, you know, drugs in the air. We having a ball. This shit is amazing. But, bro, she would just get triggered by, like, anything that was sex or Mm. baby-related. And and, and at that point, bro, I understand. I'm like, you wild. Like, if you over it, be over it. Mm -hmm. Like... I'm really looking at her like, if you said you over it, you, you bullshit now because you supposed to let shit go and not talk about it no more. But I realized now, like, that ain't how shit work. That's not how people deal with trauma. And shit that real, niggas can't just put in their back pocket and be like, it's over. Like, and, no, that's just the process. And it's crazy that you say that because I can kind of relate, right? Mm-hmm. Like, not with the kid thing, but, you know, we talk about it so I can say it. Me and my girl tried the threesome thing, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I think that probably was, like, the, the, the biggest detriment Mm-hmm. To our relationship because it 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 unfolded so many other things. Right. Right. Because we both wasn't ready in a sense of just mentally, right? We 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 wanted to be there in the flesh. And sure, I know bro. some people probably think it's some bullshit, but like, look, get it how you can get it. You feel me? So like I think a part of it, a part of her wanted to please me. Right. A part of me wanted I had a it was an ego thing because it's like now I don't have to cheat. Cause I remember mm-hmm. as a man, I grew up thinking that, you know, bro, like Cheating is the biggest problem to my relationship. That's what I thought. If I don't right. have to, if, if I can be faithful to a chick, then I'm going to have the best relationship. But there's right. so many other problems outside of just Absolutely. infidelity, right? So I'm thinking, <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I feel you, bro. I don't have to cheat. We can get bitches together, right? That's that's what I'm thinking. So I'm yeah. like, shit, now I'm probably scouting chicks because I don't know no better. Her yeah. mind, she's probably like, she, she, she's used to me being in, or now she, she sees me being in women's spaces and she don't like that. She's right. not able to articulate that. Now we're clashing together because we don't know how to fucking communicate to yeah. each other our triggers. Bro, it's threesome etiquette. Mm, it's a mm-hmm. lot of shit that come with that, bro. Like A lot. It's a lot, bro. Top, top, five, top five etiquettes or rules that you got to take in consideration first. If y'all fucking on something, group chat it. Make sure the communication is in you and your old lady phone so y'all can see that shit together. Mm. Ask your old lady physically, like, what are the no-goes? Like, eating pussy or kissing or anything. That shit mm. matters. That shit was set off a whole goddamn war. Um, I think it's important, too, to identify who's the aggressor and who isn't. So, like, because you could do some shit, like, if y'all bagging something, y'all hitting it on a regular, you may pull up one day on your aggressive shit. And then your lady may identify that and be like, well, damn, you don't pull up on me like that or mm. you don't give me that energy, but you're going to give this bitch that energy. That could be a problem. So identify who's the aggressor. Like me and her, bro, I ain't going to lie. We have a whole script. Like it's a script. Like I know how to function in that environment to make her feel comfortable. She going to take the lead. I'm a man of very few words. I'm going to come through, wham, bam, and I'm out of there. I'm going to go dip off and smoke. She going to do all that nurturing. Girl, you okay? You want something to drink? I ain't on that. I'm out of there. Um, That's a Scorpio thing too I think I love it Yeah My favorite attribute honestly For sure Nurturing Oh my god Yeah absolutely right. Nurture me baby Nurture, <laughs> nurture what I got going on um, What else bro I, I know for me like I don't initiate I don't even initiate contact Without letting her know mm. So if I see something I'ma shoot it to the DM Or I'ma send her the picture Be like what you think We gonna agree on it And then we gonna go And shit bro That's what in itself Finding women that Y'all agree on Cause like you may have totally different tastes from your old lady. Like Chelsea, Chelsea likes very like she gotta be super pretty and she like them slender in a certain way. I like them that way. Sometimes I like them thick. Shit, I done had some times where like I done been on like man, we gotta bag us some. I, I want to hit a white girl. Let's. I ain't had too much fun. I done hit one white girl in my life. I'm like shit, we gotta hit us some white girls, some some Oriental shit, some Asian shit. Yada yada yada. I just be all over and she be like, oh nah, you know. So right there. That could be a disconnect. Or, yeah, bro, just looks, who going to be the aggressor, group texting, 
making sure like your energy is on point and it's in the line when that young lady around kissing, eating pussy. Like it's it's a lot of things, bro. Did you learn this on the way? Or I, had learned, you... I had learned all that shit on the fly. So I had some arguing ass nights and some nights like, damn, nigga, what you doing? I'm like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. We said this conversation. I'm like, what you want me to have? Wax sex? And she like, you just she like, you supposed to just come in, just pound it out, get her some dick and send her on the way. And I'm like, babe, listen. I'm somebody. I don't want to be just going back like, oh, I hung with that nigga. That shit was trash. Yada, yada. Like, I got to pull out the works. And she like, no, nigga, I get the works. They just get the work. And I was just like, all right. So I had to un- understand that part too. It's fortunate that you was able to learn that through, right? Because a lot of mm-hmm. times you get the one time, right? And you just get the pain behind it. Right. Because, again, like I said, in my situation, we aren't able to articulate to each other the disagreements, the, right. what we like and what we don't like. Mm-hmm. And I think that's super important. Even if, if you're going to do it, some people don't agree with it, but right. if you're going to be in that position, make sure you are respectful and you're communicating. And I think that's what anything, right? Absolutely. Like you want to overly be overly communicate. Bro, for sure. Over-communication is a must, period. Nah, facts. Yo, um, let's start. Let's get into the people. I know we should we should have talked about this for first, but the shit that people want to <laughs> hear about, the gold, mm-hmm. the... um, How much gold do you think you got now? Uh, Bro, last I checked, I have... 31 kilos. So it's roughly like 60. It's between 60 and 70 pounds. Bro, first of all, how much is that, I guess? The 31 va- kilos. The valuation, is bro, is at, with Rollies included, it's at 1.8 million. I've mm-hmm. only spent probably like 1.1, but gold has it has performed well over the last couple of years. So the valuation on paper is at 1.8. What made you get into that? Uh, Nip, Killer Mike, Ghostface Killer. Uh, and Slick Rick. So you don't fuck with the, like, you know how niggas be doing a bust down and shit like that? I mean, bro, this one is. But I only got one of these. Everything else is plain Jane. Damn. Jeez. But I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, I believe in duality and balance. So as much as I invest smart, I do have some times where I just, I be on bullshit. And I'm like, yeah, we gonna live a little today. We gonna break all the rules and just wild out. I feel like that's important, though. For sure, bro. Especially when you first start getting money, because now you under- you got it out the way. Right. Now you're able to understand and recognize, all right, this is a bullshit cop, but it's bullshit because I want it. Right. I'm okay with that. I, I literally bought this for the visual. Nothing right. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, rest of them is all investment piece. I mean, and this one works on paper too, but yeah, bro, even like the jet shit, I had that phase, like we, we private, we private, but I, I'm not interested anymore. That's why I agree, bro. You're right, like. Uh, to me, life is life is just a bunch of experiences. That's all life is, is just is a bunch of experience. And I just I'm glad to be able to say like I had hella experience, but I do wise enough at a certain point to be like, that jet shit was cool for 2020 and 2021. But these days, now we're gonna chill. Fuel level, fuel, fuel prices is way too high. Niggas charging 25k to get a flight from Tampa to the A. It ain't worth it. We're going back to commercial and we're gonna sit our ass down before we be broke just cause we was Flying jets and taking pictures on G4s and shit. Mm. Now, with the gold thing, I want, I'm just trying to learn some things, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, it's for generational wealth, mm-hmm. right? So, when you go, is it, do you sign it over to your kids now? How does yeah. that work? So, bro, uh, and it's funny you ask that because my lawyer actually coming down soon to add some stuff to my trust. But yeah, bro, so each of my gold pieces will have a custom made um, serial number. It'll be allocated. It'll be, it'll be allocated amongst. My current seven children, if I have 10, 12, whatever the case is, it'll be allocated amongst them. So outside of it, it's a universal currency. Gold is accepted literally anywhere in the world. Number two, bro, uh, you can insure it. You got benefits of insuring it because if you lose it, quote unquote, um, and if you get a dope ass appraisal, your insurance is going to pay you a lot more than what your shit was actually worth. Another thing too, bro, is you can open up a policy on your goal. And that's when you can actually start functioning as your own bank. Shout out to my bro, uh, Jake Taylor. He taught me that, and I've done that in real life. But it's companies out here that actually insure your goal and then let you borrow from what you, what is worth. So, like, bro, I had a point in my life where I just didn't want to work. This was recently where I wanted to take a full break, and I didn't want to have to dip into my personal bread to sustain my lifestyle or my payroll. So, bro, I had, like, I... I paid my payroll, I don't know how many times this month, this year, bro, off my Rolex collection. Because the company that I got a policy with, I can borrow from what my goal is worth. Mm-hmm. So I can pull up and be like, shit, I need 300000 And they're going to wire that shit in my account and we're going to keep going. So 
Yeah, bro. Outside of the generational wealth, universal currency, outside of the insurance aspect, you can actually get policies on your jury and live off your jury. But wouldn't you have to, like, if you got that policy and you, and you borrow from mm -hmm. the policy, you have to still pay it back like a loan, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's like a loan. But just imagine, like, if you needed a quick 500000 and mm -hmm. you got, like, in my case, bro, I don't wear none of that shit because it's too heavy at this point. It's just a bunch of, I got, like, 17 Cubans. I got the big nip piece that's two kilos. I got the DGTV piece that's like five kilos. It's just shit that ain't even healthy to wear around your neck at this point. Nigga, like, I'm trying to get one Cuban. Like, man, that's my. Yeah, my bro, I'm, I'm I'm super light. Bro, I'm gonna keep it real. This is actually Chelsea chain. Like, I'm my shit's so heavy. Like, I wear my old lady chain. But, um, yeah, bro, you uh you do have to pay it back. But it's a good. I mean, shit, it's a good quick. It's a quick little pick me up, like. I need, I need half a million. Say so I'm less. trying to understand that, right? So let's say if you appraise it, right? Let's say you mm -hmm. get it for a certain price, you appraise it at double, right? Mm -hmm. If you borrow half of the double, right? Mm -hmm. Or um, like, like say a, a, a third of it, mm -hmm. right? You still, you still not in over your head with it, right? Because right. you still, you st it's still worth more than what you paid for it. Absolutely. Let's say you don't pay that back and they keep it. Oh yeah, they're keeping that shit for sure. But you still ain't lose, kind of, right? Or how does that work? I mean, you didn't lose because you got the cash. Especially if you got a plan with the cash, then yeah, you won because you're going you gonna to flip the cash and probably go buy back the same shit at a better rate. Like me, I got a dope relationship. Shout out my jeweler, uh, Golden Diamonds of Tampa Neal. But yeah, bro, me and him have a, that's like my brother. We got a beautiful relationship. So yeah, I'm sure in like my case for sure, that would work out. But that also depends on if you got a plan with the money. Now, if you borrow half a million on your jury and fuck it off, then shit, you... You squat, you you squat, squandered the half a million, and you ain't getting that jury back if you can't make that payment. Mm. But yeah, bro, it's just like a loan. Like they'll shoot you something, you are gonna pay interest on it, and then once you're done, like you could redo the policy, keep the policy, whatever you want to do with it. So I've heard about the um the insurance thing, right? Like you mm -hmm. say, you, you lost it. Yeah, yeah. If you lost it, right? But you can't be seen with that shit. Like, how does that work? So we bro, probably shouldn't uh, even talk about this shit. <laughs> I've watched several entertainers, right? And I could be completely wrong. But I feel like I ain't got I don't even want to say bro name because he's no longer here. I don't even I, I wouldn't even want to bring up his name unless it was something beautiful. And this ain't a bad thing anyway, but I remember a headline coming out that bro left his car unlocked, nigga stole like half of me in a jury. Um but I also remember shortly after that, bro came out with a whole new set of blue fucking jewelry. Like, this is a rapper that wore a lot of blue jewelry. And shout out to bro. He's an amazing family man, father, all that. But, uh, yeah, bro, I don't, th I, I don't think they do get I don't think they are re-seen with it. I think they flip, they hit, and then they go get, like, they re-up on new jewelry, keep the extra bread, put it in your pocket, and go on about your life. But that's lit. I know, bro, if I did it, that's how that would be handled. So what would you do with the old jewelry? Because you can't sell it at that point, right? Yeah, bro, you just... Bro, that should have go back in my safe. It's gonna be in my trust. That's gonna be for my kids to play with. And and the way I look at it is if if I'm dead, is which is when they get access to the trust. I don't give a fuck what the insurance company find out. Then like, nigga, I'm dead. What you gonna go to my son and be like, give me that Nipsey piece? Mm. Nah. Okay. Or charge me with fraud once I'm dead or something. Like, nah, I'm gone. Okay. Damn. That's crazy, bro. That's. But yeah, and and then bro, you gotta think in my world. Like, I got a bunch of Cubans. Nigga ain't gonna be able to tell that them yeah. the same Cubans. Nah, now I ain't gonna lie, if I pop back out with Nip, yeah. Or I could just be like, shit, I went back to Neil and Neil made me a brand new Nip. So okay. it can be done for sure, bro. I ain't telling nobody to go risk their freedom. Yeah, of course, y'all yeah, yeah, be good, y'all be safe. But I'm just saying, I've seen entertainers do that shit. Absolutely, thing like a lot of them full of shit. And then a good, I mean, I ain't mad at them. Like insurance companies been fucking us, you know, just a little payback. They got it. So uh, I think the saying was the uh, our country was built off of uh, violence, violence, entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you we see this is probably one of the biggest things that a lot of people see you teaching your kids how to shoot the guns. Mm -hmm. At what point a time when you was like, bro, I need to teach these my kids how to protect themselves? Uh, I shot somebody in front of Derek. I shot two people in front of Derek, and at that point, uh, I was gonna teach him anyway. But it just sped up the process of being like I, I knew her curiosity was gonna be on a level it had never been. What happened? If um, what birthday was that? It was on my birthday, bro. Um, uh, that was my twenty fifth or twenty sixth. But I went to go pick up a young lady who was the mother of three of my beautiful children. Shout out to my children and her. Um, and. 
Bro, her family having a disagreement, I pull up at the wrong time, wrong place. I get pulled into the disagreement, and the next thing I know, I shot uh, her mom and her brother. Mm. Got to say this all the time. I did not intend to shoot her mama. Her mama did what a mom would do, and when I drew down on her son, she jumped in the way, and mm. she ended up getting shot because I definitely was trying to kill her son. Well, I wasn't trying to kill him, but I definitely want to shoot him. But, yeah, uh, so, yeah, bro, Derrica happened to be with me that night, and from there, I knew it was more important than ever to start giving her the game on guns because they used to see me with guns in the crib. They would be curious, but as a child, once you see somebody actually using on someone, that's that's going to heighten your curiosity. So David, Derek have been learning about guns since he was three. I put a gun in her hand at three years old. Her brother was six, and they've been rocking ever since. But, yeah, bro, I, I feel like I don't want it to sound... No, nah, fuck it. It is what it is America. I think it's we absolutely gotta teach our children how to kill. Mm. It's 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 ne- it's necessary. Like them niggas out there don't care. They don't be like, oh bro, he twelve, let him go. No, nah, they'll blow his motherfucking head off or like, oh she eleven, don't kidnap her. Mm. No, they'll snatch her little ass up. So yeah, bro, I don't Yeah, center mass. You shoot that motherfucker in his face or his head. All all we work on is center mass. Well, I don't want no chest, I don't want no stomach, I don't want no leg. Knock a motherfucking head straight off their shoulders, bro. So how do you protect the irresponsibility of a child, though? Because, again, you could teach him how to have mm-hmm. uh, use guns and things like that, but kids going to be kids at the end of the day. How do you, how do you, where do you draw that line as far as protecting them from themselves? So with that, bro, I tell parents all the time, you do have to gauge their maturity. My children grew up, like, their maturity, their maturity levels were sped up. I think, one, because mine was sped up, and two, I was a single dad for a great deal of their early existence. So I was raising them on my own, like solo. Derek and mama was going through some changes, so she had to get some distance to figure stuff out with her. And then Derek mom was stationed in Korea in the Air Force. So I was doing shit on my own. So they grew up more resilient and stronger than your average average three and six year old gonna grow up. Cause they, they, they running with a whole man who's still figuring himself out. I'm like 22 at this point. I had Derek at 18. I had her at 21, 22. No, I'm like 25. But yeah, bro, you do have to gauge your maturity level because every child ain't ready. Like my two right under them, Melanin and God, they aren't ready. They they free spirited. They're my babies. They beautiful little girls. They they're very gentle. They're not ready to like pick up a gun. Derek was ready at three. They're both six. They aren't ready. So it do you do have to like study your child and assess if they really understand the seriousness of life and death and that this shit will kill them or somebody, mm-hmm. use the right or wrong way. It's crazy because like I, I think you probably would think it is differently, but I think it's because the culture shock, like you from Tampa, mm-hmm. from Baltimore, East Coast, like you get caught with a strap. Mm-hmm. It's over for you, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, can we strap in Baltimore? <clears throat> they just now passed a law where you can okay. um conceal the carry, right? So I got you. uh but it's funny, I, I have this different prayer. It's like I always pray, like, I never want to be in a position where I have to prove my love mm-hmm. to to my family right. because I'm willing to do whatever I got to do, mm-hmm. right? But I don't ever want to have to prove that. I feel like you probably would think that, obviously, like, I'm waiting on a nigga to try me. So, bro, <clears throat> it's more of that gross shit. I ain't going to lie, bro. I did have that mentality early on. I had a, um, bro, I think, that's why I agree when they were talking about music and movies. It is mm-hmm. very influential, bro. Like, I remember I bought my first Mac 11, uh, just loving men into society. I bought my first Tommy gun. Right now, I brought on like six Tommy guns, and that's thanks to uh, damn Lawrence Fishburne was in that movie. It was some, it was a gangster movie back in the day, some mob shit. But yeah, bro, the things that my parents had gave me access to, it did like definitely influence me. Mm. So yeah, bro, I I did have periods in my early life where like I was ready, like just come outside ready to. I didn't want it, bro, but I knew the minute it presented itself, I was gonna show up with motherfucking A plus, cause I'm train, I I train, and I'm just like I'm on that. Like if y'all chilling, I'm chilling, but if y'all not chilling, I'm gonna start shooting immediately, cause I'm just I'm ready to shoot, I'm ready to kill somebody. And then I ain't gonna lie, bro, when I finally shot two people, um, that shit was nothing like the movies. It was nothing like the music. That shit was very traumatic. It was. Bro, the, the motions your body go through, all that shit, bro, it was crazy as fuck. It was a a, a crazy ass. It ain't no shit I want to experience again. Mm. But if I had to, bro, I'm definitely like, sign me up. Because mm. I I'm I don't I don't want no problems, bro. But if they ever present themselves, yeah, I'm definitely going. I'm going home. I know that. Is that by something any that means? It's something that you think about to this day, like those two people you shot. No, nah, bro, I don't think about that. But I do 
uh, my head always on the swivel just because of the looming danger that that come with living in America. Period. Especially these times, like niggas is thirsty, niggas is moving different. So that's on my mind. But hurting them, nah, bro. I I, I released that. I, I I ain't even gonna say I forgave myself because I still don't hold myself to blame. Like they was just on some wild shit, and niggas know like. One thing I feel like everybody universally know is like it's one thing to play with a motherfucker, but don't play with people when they got their kids. That's mm. a death sentence. Like, just stay the fuck away from people when they with their children. So, nah, bro. If I had to do that again, I'd do that again. Shit would probably be worse because I shoot way better now, but yeah. Damn, man. It's crazy because I, uh, I was saying, like, I was telling my shorty, like, bro, I be in a crib. I don't know if you've seen a Bun B situation when they try to run up in his crib. Mm-mm, recently? Nah, this was like a while ago, but they tried mm. to run up in his crib with his wife. And they, they didn't know he was upstairs. He mm-hmm. was literally upstairs on the, taking the shit or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. And he ended up shooting a nigga. And, um, Damn, for real? Yeah. yeah. It was Bumby, I think, if I'm not mistaken. You look Jeez. it up. Yeah, it was Bumby, right? Yeah, so um, I say, I was telling my girl, like, bro, it's crazy because he 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 literally said on The Breakfast Club, like, I, I, it was easy for me because I already had it in my mind how that would go down. Right. And I would tell my girl that all the time, like, bro, it's like, I've... If something was to happen in this room and anywhere, mm-hmm. in my mind, I already thought about how it would go down, how I react. Right. And some people would say, "Bro, that's uh, that's being pessimistic." Was always it's that's kind of like bringing negativity to you because you're thinking mm-hmm. about it. For me, bro, it's I I don't see how you can live here and not have that mentality. Mm. Or like you and bro, I'm a real private person. Like I don't come out the house, but it's still like danger is everywhere. Like you could pump gas, you can go pick up a pizza. You got motherfucker who get your address and find a way to get into your gate, and now it's on. So for me, bro, I that's what I say, bro. Like, when we talking about earlier with faith. It's just the readiness. For me, like, I train so much that I'm, like, confident enough. Like, when bro say he knew how that was going to happen, that shit come from training. That shit to have you not feeling invincible, but it's going to have you ready. Like, bro, if y'all niggas is ninjas, snipers, whatever y'all want to do, I'm with it. Like, I'm trained in several different places. But, no, nah, bro, I don't see this pessimistic. Like, if people really looked at the murder rate, and, the, and, bro, if you black, period, like, our culture is the most affected, the most locked up, and the most motherfuckers that get killed, but the least educated. Mm. A nigga thing like that is just clearly, like, either they know some level of peace and saviorism, saviorism that we don't, or they just out here, like, on some ignorant shit, like, nothing can happen to me because yeah. I'm Johnny and y'all yeah, prayed today, all right? Bro, I ain't gonna lie, I came from a place where, bro, it's get crazy fast, quick, mm-hmm. fast, and in a hurry. And if you can't think on your feet, it's for sure, bro. over for you. Bro, like, that's what I tell you about situational awareness is important. I ain't sitting with my back to the door. I don't keep my kids and my, my woman not in the street. Uh, We move, we walk with proximity. I mean, I got my own security company and all, but even when I'm on my solo shit, like, I'm moving a certain way because you just never know. Like, it's niggas that wake up every day with the best intentions and die that night. Mm. Niggas ain't. I'm going home. Curious, since we here, you know, when you walking with your family, right, mm. or your or your wifey, right? Do you walk in front or in back of her? So, bro, it depends on the environment. We gonna switch up. We gonna zigzag. Like, where, where we was at? We was in little five points yesterday. And if we moving and we got people coming in an opposing direction, I'm gonna lead because if we don't really have people behind us, I feel safer with me getting in front. Cause if it is a threat, bro, got to meet me first. If mm-hmm. a car gonna swerve, they got to meet me first. Uh, no, nah, bro, we got bro, we got a bubble that we walk in, and if people come in that bubble, like motherfucker gonna put hands on you. Like either, really, with the bubble, I'm with security. You ain't even gonna get close to the bubble. But if I'm on my like solo shit, like I ain't moving with security today. We got a proximity move it with the children and the lady where like you ain't gonna get close, and if you get that look. close. So basically, bro, uh, like I said, it depends on the environment. But my children are trained too. And I don't hang with women that don't train. So I ain't gonna lie, our bubble, our bubble fluctuates because everybody know how to kill people. Like, I ain't gonna lie, that's one one strong suit about the family that I'm confident with. Like, my son shoot better than like anybody in my family besides my pops. He really can outshoot anybody. And he don't use sights. He like just straight right eye, he gonna knock some shit down. He good from 200 yards. My daughter, ambidextrous, she could bust that motherfucker left or right. So she may come out. You just never know. But with the bubble, bro, I, I ain't going to lie. With the bubble with my children and my lady, like I said, it fluctuates because we know who going to lead. We know who's stronger. I know my son, long range, he's stronger than anybody. Like even with my crib. So I got security that said 24 hours. But if a motherfucker ever get past, my children have a plan of action. Like you go here, I'm going here, I'm meeting niggas here, Chelsea going to meet them here. Ain't no way they should be able to get in because you got the overhead shot. 
you coming this way. Bro, we got intentional guns set up throughout the house. I tell everybody, got, you got to look in the floating bookshelves. That shit look like you got a stack of books, but it's like a cold on the side or it's a little magnet. Drop it down, whole motherfucking bazooka pop out the wall. So shit like that. But like I said, bro, our bubble fluctuates depending on the environment. If it's a lot of traffic in the environment and if we really got time to retreat, if it's a handgun type of reaction or we really got time like, I mean, shit, I got a flamethrower. So it just really depends on the environment and what's going on of who going to lead and who going to shoot first, who going to shoot second. Okay, no, nah, because I'm always looking to ways to, like, protect myself and my family. I ask that because most of the times I walk, unless there's a lot of people, most of the mm-hmm. times I walk in the back of my woman because I can mm-hmm. see right. what's in front of me and I can catch what, what well, might yeah, come behind Yeah, behind, they're going to they gonna grab you first. Yeah. Give her time to move or give her time to shoot something and get up. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, I'm bro, just like, Even when I'm sleeping, I don't sleep next to the door because that extra split second can make sure that I get us out of here. Mm-hmm. When niggas approach me, uh, most times my security ain't going to let them approach you. They're going to ask me first, like, is it cool? And I'm going to be like, yeah, because I, I do show love. But any man I talk to, bro, front and center, he's never, he's typically never going to get, like, a face-to-face shot with me. I'm always going to leave with my left because I'm right-handed. So I'm always coming, like, if I got to draw down or if I got to swing on, if I got to get off and steal him before he get off, I'm always leaving with his left because I'm right-handed. Uh, bro, down to the host, I tell people, like, even with gun holsters, when you buy one, walk around the crib with it. Like, that's that's your lifesaver. Y'all need to have a dope relationship. You need to have a feel for it. You need to really know when I wear my sweats, when I wear my dress, when I wear my shorts, whatever I'm wearing, I'm comfortable with the holster. I know how I'm coming. I know how I'm going to retreat. It's, I ain't going to lie, bro, it's a lot that comes with safety and just being in a position where you feel like you going to win no matter how this shit go. But, yeah, bro, with the proximity... Really in arm's reach. So you got to give us like three feet in total. Don't come in that bubble. And if you come in that bubble, you, yeah, somebody going to touch you. It, it, may not, it, might, it may not be violent, but a nigga definitely going to, a security going to hit your ass with that, <laughs> that chop, move your ass to the side. But yeah. How do you know when, when to not move with security, I guess? Like when do you use that discernment? Uh, so, bro, I, I ain't going to lie. For the last couple of years, I typically never do. But, bro, going back to the growth. I have been moving with them less because I've created, I've created like a wall with society to where like I'm untrusting, like to the T. I'm just always on edge, like, oh, I need security in case motherfucker try me. We gotta kill somebody, yada yada. So I ain't gonna lie, bro. As of late, I've been getting out more by myself and just being more human mm. and trying to be more, more sociable and just like, just be normal, bro. That shit get old, like. That shit just get old, overthinking life every day. Like, some days I just want to go out and just be like, bro, I'm normal like everybody else. Even I really, bro, I really be wanting to go places where I'm not known or either where I am known, but they ain't going to do the most. Mm. So that's that's most Atlanta times when place. I... <laughs> Honestly. Not nah, going to lie, bro. They do a lot out here. Everybody love. celebrities out this motherfucker. <laughs> it, it, it be love, but they, they do... Because I don't come out often, so I ain't going to lie. When motherfuckers see me, it do probably be like an alien sighting because I don't go to events. I don't, I've i never been to a club in my life. I don't party. I don't hang out. I don't do none of that shit. Okay, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Damn, I, I was talking to OMB Peasy. He was saying, he was like, bro, he don't like security all the time because sometimes the security will bring trouble. Like, people seek security and they want to automatically do something. Bro, it's good. bro no lie. I, when I flew up here a month ago, bro, I just put on a big hoodie, a mask, and some shades and breeze through the airport, bro, and nobody stopped me because they didn't know it was me. But I know if my security pop out with them fucking Grace Private Security shirts on, niggas definitely like, oh, Derek and this motherfucker. So he ain't lying, bro. Mm. That's a real thing. Like, sometimes, and I ain't gonna lie, bro, sometimes they add, they add an energy that's not necessary. Mm-hmm. I know some days, bro, I just really want to be, like, on love. Like, I want to, like, dap niggas and hug the women and, like, Love on the children. So you don't want, like, a motherfucker who kind of, like, scaring everybody off or giving unwelcoming energy. So I agree, bro. Nah, man, I appreciate you for pulling up, dog. Nah, um, no problem, bro. Appreciate anything, you. Nah, anything we didn't touch, I feel like we touched on a lot. Like, shit, a multitude of things. Uh, You got the, uh, did you drop your um your game yet? Nah, bro, we actually going to start the marketing campaign Black Friday. You about to drop the game. Yep, I'm going to um, drop the game. I ain't going to lie, bro, I feel like that's the last, that's my last offering for the culture. From a financial standpoint, I ain't got nothing else to teach him about finances. I'm gonna uh excuse me, I'm gonna drop the game, bro. And then I really I'm gonna go heavier into real estate. And I really just I'm gonna live off real estate, I think. Cause I 
I spent like four five million dollars on real estate during the pandemic. That shit done bubbled up to like ten million dollars. Mm. So I'm learning that game now that like I really don't ever have to work hard again. I literally can just leverage those assets and just keep repeat. Like right now, bro, I just refinanced one of my cribs and then I bought a crib up here for like one point two five. And I'm realizing like the old me would have tried to go grind that shit up cash. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm cool. Like I got eight homes already paid for. I'm not gonna die because I got one mortgage. Mm. So, yeah, bro, I'm gonna drop that video game, and I ain't got shit else to teach. I don't. I'm not interested in teaching. So if I knew it's gonna be all self development. Before you go, fuck it, shit. I get 25 bands right now. Mm -hmm. How do I invest that in, in, into something that's gonna make me the most money with the best possible outcome? Bro, honestly, I would tell you, I would tell you to self assess and figure out what you're good at. Mm -hmm. Start a digital digital business based on what you're good at. And I could literally teach you how to start a digital. All right, so shit, let's run it down real quick. Let's run it down. Fuck it. All right, let's bro, run it. <laughs> say you was an author. Uh, say say you want to write a book about your life in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Um, off the rip, bro. Off the rip, I feel like anybody with any type of business should have at least five to seven ways that they could they could they could get paper off that one business. So if you like, yeah, I'm gonna write a book. All right, cool. So the first thing we're gonna do. Cause we we gonna play like we broke. We only want to spend the twenty five. We really just want to create a digital product. And we gonna use like two thousand of that for marketing. If that get some ads behind it. But other than that, you ain't got to spend twenty five. Step one. You can either go live, you can hold a Zoom call, or you can just talk into your phone. We gonna transcribe your conversation and make that your book. We ain't gonna use all that time typing and doing all that extra shit. You can get apps that can edit it for you. Or you may spend a couple of dollars to get somebody to edit. So cool. You, now you don't you done spent five hundred or your twenty five thousand. Transcribe your conversation. Now it's a book. You got the physical book. That's gonna cost you money to get those copies made, of course. You got the physical version, you got the digital version, because you gotta remember you transcribed it in the first place. And because you transcribed it, now you got an audio version. So this one conversation, you now got three ways to get paid after one conversation. You take chapters in that book and you break them down into actual curriculums. So niggas going to consume the book, they're going to want more. Don't give them everything in the book. They're going to want more. They're going to want how-tos. So then you can make three, four curriculums based off this same body of work. For the people who got even lower attention spans, you can make how-to guides. So say chapter two was about the time you almost died. You then can make a curriculum, 10 things I learned the time I almost died. You gonna have, And like what I learned, bro, is like it's all about pain points. So when you find a, the relatability with the audience, they're going to they gonna pull into whatever you're teaching because all of us either dealing with the same shit at some point in life, we're going to deal with the same shit. So now you got a physical book, you got an audio book, you got a digit, digital book, you got curriculums. that. So like a book is a good read. A curriculum is more so an educational guide on what you just read. So the curriculum is where you're going to test the knowledge that they should have took from the book. But for the motherfuckers who, who again, who attention span even lower than that, now you got way number five because you're going to make motherfuckers pay for how-to guys. You're going to make those. That, that, that may be one sheet or one digital file. How I did this. How, like, I got a bunch of them, bro, like, uh, six steps to be a more assertive father. Bro, that shit is one sheet of paper. But niggas pay $50 for it because those six steps that I give them are that fucking important to fatherhood and the pain points and the relatability that they see me exhibit with my children makes them want to do the same thing with their children. Mm. So now we're getting money five ways off this one idea that you conceptualize with the book. Next thing is to do Zoom calls based on the book. So y'all can actually do case studies on each chapter. So now you're making motherfuckers pay to, get, to be able to have that intimate conversation with you on like, well, damn, explain chapter one again and how you did this and that. So now for them to get that group interaction on Zoom, that's way number six. Cool, all y'all pay me $40 a head for this meeting we gonna have. If you wanna go deeper, now you start charging motherfuckers for one-on-one -on -one consultations. You want the exclusivity? Now I need a couple hundred dollars from you. So now we at way number seven. Way number eight, bro, literally will make five more ways. You can then create a new product to teach motherfuckers how to do what you just did. So don't, don't learn in my book, but I'm gonna show you how to take your pain points and your story Turn it into a book like I did. Turn it into a curriculum. Turn it into a how-to guide. Turn it, in, turn it into Zoom calls. Way number nine, bro, is then taking your feedback from the Zoom calls, the book, the curriculums, getting the EPK, and then sending that shit to other institutions saying, like, y'all should book me to come speak because I can verbalize this same conversation that niggas had to 
spend six hours reading in my book and my curriculums in one hour, and y'all could just give me $5,000 flat. Damn. And, bro, if you realize in that whole process, you spent money on an editor, you're going to spend money on your physical copies, and you're going to spend maybe $100 to get somebody to make you an EPK. So all in all, you fuck around and spent two grand of your 25, but you now got nine ways to recoup that two. You fuck around and make you 200. And guess what, though? What's that? All that came from essentially a podcast. Bro, literally. Because like you said, you just speak it into yeah, the phone, you send it to somebody. Bro, bro, you can have one dope conversation and turn that shit into a whole like 10 stream, 10, 10 money stream getting product. Damn, I'm about to start having books. So like these interviews are two hours long, just send it to somebody, have a book. Bro, look, I ain't gonna lie, bro. If you, <laughs> man, listen, I have motherfuckers signing releases that we can actually like monetize the conversations. Oh, and, like, damn, I forgot. I got it. For you to say. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I definitely have a release. Like, yeah, you know, we appreciate you coming, but we own the intellectual property. Yeah, no, it's a media release, yeah. Yeah. And then after that, like, don't trip, bro, but we're going to make a, you know what I'm saying? We're going to make a little book, our, our conversation. That's hard. Y'all fuck with it. Yo, this is a great conversation, bro. I appreciate, appreciate you for it, bro. coming, being so vulnerable, so open. Um, This shit was fire, bro. Appreciate you. Bro, I appreciate you too, bro, because I, I, um, I purposely don't do interviews because they all be talking about the same shit, bro. But we literally didn't talk about none of this shit that... Because all niggas want to talk about is just guns, pussy, and gold. Mm. So, nah, bro, I appreciate that. Nah, it's it's funny because, like, we... It's funny because we, we we was able to talk about those things, right? Yeah, bro. from bro, a different bro, way. Yeah, we did it from a, a mature perspective. Mm. Not just, like, celebrating that, like, oh, niggas rich and having things and be fucking and having orgies and got guns and... Nah, bro, we you did it You might just talk a, to a lot of rich niggas then because I'm not, I'm not there yet, so I can't... Yeah. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be there. <laughs> I feel you, bro. I ain't gonna talk to you about being rich, my yeah. nigga. I ain't rich right now. I feel you, bro. But nah, man, I appreciate letting niggas know how to follow you for the people that don't know. Oh, we gotta try this. You said you want to try it. Yeah, yeah, bro. I'll take a shot. Damn, man, it's his first time he said he don't drink. So no, nah, I don't. I don't drink at all, bro. Uh, we drinking this bamboo. You know what I'm saying? So let's 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 give it a try. You gotta pour your own poison though. So oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm gonna pour a little baby shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. That shit smell like it burned. Nah, it's actually cool. <laughs> it's actually cool. Shout out to my uh, audio engineer, Kyron. He said he suggested this. So yeah. Oh, the, the bamboo, bamboo. How you say it, bro? Bamboo. Bamboo. Mm-hmm. That's right. Appreciate you having me, bro. Appreciate you for pulling up. Tell me what you think about it. Honest opinion for somebody that don't drink. It's terrible, bro. It's terrible? I hate alcohol. Mmm, disgusting. You know what, though? It don't burn my stomach, though. I say that. I ain't burning yet. It went down smooth. So it ain't that bad. I don't like how it tastes, but it did go down smooth. Mmm. Dad Grace, let people know how to follow you and everything, man. Yeah, yeah, everything is... You got it. Say it in your mic. Pause. Yeah. <clears throat> everything my government name, y'all. You can follow me at Derek Grace 2. D-E-R-R-I-C-K-G-R-A-C-E-T-W-O. Um, yeah, follow me there. I just do a lot of cool dad shit. Um, unapologetically me. Um, and yeah, I just be loving on my family, having my way with this life shit. And just evolving as a man, trying to buy up all the land and mind my business, stay out the way, and do wild shit with y'all daughters, y'all sisters, and whatnot. But other than that, that's where you can find me at. I I, I be somewhere posted up with a bunch of children, a bunch of beautiful children with locks, just talking that shit and having a ball with life. Nah, oh, man, my God, Derek Grace, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is a wrap. We out.